Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth episode in Let's Play Rule the Waves as German Empire or the Kaiserliche Marine. So the year is 1894 and uh, we have quite a lot of news. The biggest one is that our relations with uh, Great Britain have actually uh, went down slightly, but then, then <laughs> they went back up. But still, we are uh, out of the danger zone, I guess. Uh, we're currently having our relations at high animosity, which is 8, and hopefully it's just going to degrade further. Uh, other changes that we had this uh, year was neutral relations with France, so that's a plus 1. Neutral relations with Italy, which is a minus one, both at three now. We have high tensions with Russia at five, which is not bad, you know, I don't mind that. We're still far away from any uh, major issues. We still have an alliance with Japan, which is good because it's making us uh, much stronger. I believe that uh, while uh, the nation does not need to join you in offensive wars, they will almost certainly join you in any defensive wars. And while Japan is not, you know, they're on the other side of the world and they're not the biggest player on the map, they are still someone uh, that I consider fairly reliable and that they could be of use, especially if we fight someone like Russia, for example. Uh, we have increased tensions with USA, but there was no change, so that's a level 4. We have neutral relations with Austria-Hungary again, so we moved back to 3. Our overtures did not work and no alliance is in sight. And we have high tensions with Spain, level 5. Looking at the map, our ally uh, Japan has fairly high tensions with Great Britain, 5. Uh, they have high tensions with Russia, 6. And they have high tensions with Spain, level 5. So they're kind of mirroring our situation, which is good because we have the same friends and the same, well, potential enemies. Austria-Hungary, on the other hand, has bad relations with Russia, Italy and France and Great Britain. So pretty much everyone. But again, nobody at this point is close to war with anyone, which is kind of interesting. Uh, usually by this time already, at least one war has broken out. I don't mind it, honestly. I'm fairly happy with the war being, at least for some time, peaceful. Uh, but it's interesting. You know, we'll, we'll see who will bite the bullet first. Uh, when it comes to the comparison of uh, the tonnage, uh, we have had some uh, changes. France now has a bigger navy than Russia. Well, Russia got only 7,600 tons this year. Uh, France added 35,500 tons. And they are now the second biggest navy in the world. Another switch is between uh, USA and Austria-Hungary. Uh, Austria-Hungary added 24,300 tons, making them the sixth largest fleet in the world, while the USA uh, got the seventh place now. It's kind of interesting, uh, we are still fifth when it comes to the size of the Navy, but uh, we have added fourth, um, would, that, would that be the way to put it? Uh, we have put fourth most tons? Jesus Christ, that sounds really weird, but yeah, uh, as far as tonnage goes, uh, it was uh, France and, no, actually Italy added the most tons with 37,000, then France 35,000, Great Britain 32,000, and then we added 30,800 tons. And then it goes Austria-Hungary, uh, then Spain, and then Japan, and then uh, USA and then Russia. Uh, it's kind of interesting though, uh, if we can keep this up we might eventually jump over some of the nations above us, but I estimate that you know this rapid growth is gonna hold somewhere down the line as all the ships are gonna start getting retired and um, you know the budgets for navies is gonna start uh, tilting more towards actual uh, maintenance. Plus, you know, if a war breaks out, then there's a <laughs> big potential for ships uh, disappearing from the map. But we'll see. We'll see. So far, I'm kind of happy with our position uh, in the middle of the table because I believe we were slightly further down the barrel of the gun. Uh, when it comes to the economy, uh, this is the second year in a row where we actually had a small decrease in budget. Uh, this pertains to the fact that I said in the beginning of the game, and that is that, you know, you have uh, 
periods of rapid growth um, where you have you know tensions with some nations or even a war breaking out but then you can have a couple of years of relative um, recession or stagnation because um, you know there's no point in increasing your budget uh, we have jumped pretty significantly even now in five years, uh, increasing our budget to nearly double is still a great result. Uh, but I'm hoping that this year we'll finally see a little bit of a growth. Uh, we've also significantly increased the cash at hand by 41%. So we are now sitting at nearly 14,000 Reichsmark in the bank. We need to spend that, which is why our total expenses currently are at 110% of our income because I want to burn a little bit of this cash that we have. So we're burning about 1,000 Reichsmark per month because I don't want to have the Reichstag basically steal those money or steal that money away from us because they can. They can. As far as the um, expenses go, I wanted to mention that our construction is up, but ship cost is also significantly up. It increased by nearly 22.5%, uh, which is a result of us building more and more ships. And it's, you know, understandable. Uh, it is uh, progress that we're going to see will happen soon. And as we uh, roll out more ships, it's going to be soon time to start considering ships for reserve and eventual move bowling and scuttling. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, research at 12%, that's fine. Fortifications increased by 68%. We are currently at almost 200 rice mark per month, which is good because we build more and more fortifications. But our project is actually going fairly well. We're going to be sort of done soon, at which point I can start considering maybe building a second uh, line of 8-inch uh, gun uh, fortifications in the colonies, or we can add some small ones. We'll see. We'll see. But the 8-inch guns, I think, are a fairly good uh, defensive structure for now because they are not that expensive to maintain. They are expensive to build, but they actually have a pretty good impact. Now, when it comes to research, we had a bunch of new levels. Uh, we gain a level in armor development, in hull construction, in subdivisions and damage control, in turrets and gun mountings, and in armor piercing projectiles. And we actually unlocked a couple of new, um, uh, new categories. I believe that the fleet tactics and the torpedo technologies are completely new. So I added them to the table, which is, uh, you know, Understandable, I think we're gonna get soon things like airplanes, submarines, stuff like that, you know, that are gonna uh, appear. So I have to keep checking it periodically to not miss on anything. As far as fleet overview goes, we're starting to look uh, better than we did before. We now have six battleships, uh, three of those I would consider fairly capable. Three are, of course, dated uh, and are, you know, getting ready. Once we get the fourth one to be relegated into colonial uh, service and reserve. Heavy cruisers, will, we have five now. We're building one additional and light cruisers. We still have only seven, but we're building three more. And this uh, light cruiser, heavy cruiser construction is going to continue. Uh, here we uh, are going to just mention uh, the changes to our fleet. The Deutsche Kaiser class will have another ship built in two years. Uh, the Deutsche Kaiser is going to come in May 1896, which is fine because we wanted to have three built by 1895 and that is completely in line with our plan. We're actually going over the plan by building a fourth one. Uh, here I just put the uh, screenshot of the ship that we have designed and I actually wanted to mention a couple of things because you guys uh, keep basically commenting, number of you mentioned uh, the same things. Uh, most notably you guys seem to have a little bit of a problem with me putting, uh, as you put it, too much ammo on my ships. Listen, I understand that for you it might not seem like that. I understand that you would put less. The fact of the matter is I actually had not once but twice a battle where I have completely ran out of shells and it is the worst thing that can happen to your battleships. These things cannot run and the moment when they are overwhelmed and stop shooting they're done. As long as a battleship can shoot enemy is not going to come near it and even if he's much faster he's going to have one hell of a time uh, taking you down and 
when it comes to the battles, um, just imagine that we're fighting, for example, Great Britain. The game is going to pitch our ships against the enemy fleet. And because of the massive disparity of sizes, our battleship can be caught alone against five, maybe even six cruisers. It can happen. I had stuff like that in the game before. While the game is trying to be fair and pitch Si you know fleets of the same size if there is a big enough differentiation between your fleets and you have them split and uh, basically the rng sort of rules against you it can happen that your ship is uh, you know caught far away from port alone and being hunted by a number of enemy ships at that point having enough ammo is absolutely crucial because as long as you are shooting the enemy will keep away and you can save your ship by sailing it to your home port. That's actually what happened to me, I think, twice or three times. But if you run out, you are done, you know. And while I understand that, that you know, the logic, we could save a lot of space, we could have a bigger uh, belt, you know, and stuff like that on our ship, that is absolutely 100% true, but I want to feel secure. And my ships need to be secure because we're going to have very little of them compared to some bigger uh, enemies like Great Britain or even France. And if it ever comes down to it and we run out of ammo, it is the worst possible feeling to see your ships getting overwhelmed because they stop shooting. Trust me, I had that happen to me never again. <laughs> it might be, and I mean, I completely understand that it's unlikely. You know, I'm not saying that you guys uh, are telling or saying nonsense and that I reject your argument. It's just that once it happens to you, you will never want to see that again. And I'm not putting some inordinate amount, you know, 170 or, you know, 150 if we go a little bit low, lower rounds is not bad at all. But especially in the beginning when you have very low chances and remember the chances can be um, around 1% to hit. If you have 170 uh, shots per your gun it means that you're gonna hit what twice maybe three times if you're lucky you know it's really un until better fire controls and radars come around the shooting is all you can do and you're just praying that you're great if you see every chance is like three or four percent you will make a little victory dance you know so, so trust me i'm doing it and I'm well aware that we're wasting size, you know, for for this, but I still feel much secure. Uh, another argument that you actually made, and I wanted to clarify that, yes, I'm not going to put um, secondary turrets on the ship. The reason why I put it there, I was wondering if we could do it, but uh, the secondaries are definitely going to be case-mated. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, I, you know... Um, I'm not sure if I understand it 100% correctly, but if you have your secondaries in casemates, some of the hits might be absorbed by your belt. That's how I understand it, because they're actually embedded in the hull. If you make them turreted, they are actually on top of the ship, and while they have much higher or much bigger arc to shoot from, uh, and the numbers that we are seeing on our battleships, it is not such a big advantage, and they will then have only the uh, armor that you put on them. In this case, we have four. But if we have four, and we have them casemated, um, you know, the belt can absorb some of the hits. So, you know, if uh, if the belt doesn't absorb it, you use the secondary gun. And, you know, fair point, I didn't mention that. I plan to have them casemated. The reason why I put the turrets there was just... Like, wow, we can actually do that. I'm, I'm kind of surprised I didn't expect that. So, yes, that's true. Uh, but then again, like, feel free to discuss me on this. I, I really don't... I'm, I'm, I appreciate all your comments. It's not that I want to be dick, a dick about it or something. But it's just, you know, it happened. <laughs> and it scarred me for life. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's continue. Um, we're building uh, a third cruiser of the Victoria Louise class. It's going to be called Irene Isabel. And it's going to be done in uh, March 1895, if my calculation is correct. And we are building three uh, light cruisers of the Gazelle class, uh, Zebra, Topi, and Ibex. Uh, two of those are going to come this year, uh, one in March and one in December. 
and the Ibex should come in January 1895. So we're actually going to see all of them coming in this episode. And I think that's all the ships that we're building, yep. And as far as bases and land fortifications go, we increased the dockyard capacity by 1500 tons uh, past year, which is great. And we have actually built quite a lot of uh, defensive batteries as well. We now have uh, an actual batter in every single um, territory that we own, which is great. All of them are now defended. As you can see, all of our colonies have at least one 8-inch gun coastal battery, while we now need to work on the situation in our uh, home ports, because as we mentioned here, my plan was to have at least three 6-inch coastal batteries and three 4-inch coastal batteries in all our core territory so that's gonna take a little bit of time and then we're gonna go back uh, to expanding the coastal batteries in our colonies i mean i wanted to have uh two six inch batteries there by 1895 that's not happening instead we're gonna have that one eight inch battery which i think is a bit more valuable and we can start adding the six inch batteries later and as far as officer core goes we're getting a little bit top heavy uh, we now have eight admirals uh, which, okay, fine, fair enough, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, five Contra Admirals, you know, a little bit of a decrease there, so eight Admirals, five Contra Admirals. We have one more Capitaine Surze, and we have the same amount of Fregat and Capitans. Uh, I'm hoping that it's gonna increase slightly more as we uh, build more ships. Well, it will have to because, you know, you need um, crews for your ships, basically. And that's all for this report. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll jump into the game. So here we are, January 1894. And what are we going to do? Well, I guess we're just going to end the turn because there's not much that we can do at this point. Our ships in service are okay. Our ships under construction are okay. Can I actually have the zebra coming out of the dockyard in two months, which is good. Uh, the coastal fortifications are being... Wow, we're gonna get a lot of them done in one turn, in one month. Okay, so we're gonna set to build a new um, set of them immediately, pretty much. Okay, so let's end the turn, see what's gonna happen. So we have finished the construction of a 4-inch coastal battery in East Prussia, Eastern Germany, East Prussia, and Germany. And the Navy League is complaining that we have too few armored cruisers. Oh, come on. Captain Zuse Olsen of the battleship Weisenberg is promoted to Contra Admiral and placed in command of the Home Fleet Cruiser Support. And Captain Zuse Handorf Hen is placed in command of Weisenberg. Okay. Uh, Captain Zuse. Dalvik zu Lichtenfels is placed in command of battleship Wilhelm I. Okay, we finished the four coastal batteries. Uh, the Navy League is complaining. I mean, I hope that didn't hit us into prestige. I didn't check. I think we had 17 even before. And we have uh, Fregatten Captain Wolf promoted to Captain Zurze and Fregatten Captain. Schauren is placed in command of a Niobe. Tensions between France and Great Britain decreased because of their common values, and tensions between Spain and Japan increased because of the Philippines. Okay, not much happening there. Uh, we finished the coastal fortification construction, so let's check it out. In Eastern Prussia, we have three six inch coastal batteries and two four inches. In Eastern Germany, we have two four inches and three six inches, and in Germany we have four and six. Wow, we have we are done. Okay, so our home territories and the uh, colonies all are done. So what we would actually want to do here next would probably be to build another set of coastal batteries. Of eight inches in our colonies and then we are done for the next what decade maybe because unless we get new territory which is of course a possibility but uh, not extremely likely so I'm just gonna wait here a turn because we're gonna finish uh, the zebra next turn and I would like to put another ship 
under construction. So we'll see what that's going to do to our budget. So let's end the turn. Zebra is commissioned into the Navy. Our scientists report that they are working on the problem of counterfeiting valves, but success has so far eluded them. And they are well on their way to understanding a melanite, finally. Uh, okay, uh, we have had the zebra coming out of the dockyard, and it's being commanded by Fregat and Captain Dönitz. Admiral Karp uh, of Northern Europe has retired, and Kuntar Admiral Olsen is promoted to Admiral and placed in command instead of him. Japan and Spain has decreased their tensions, which increased last time, so now they're where they were before. And our scientists report on stuff. Okay, so our funds at hand actually increased. Uh, not great, but let me check on the ship. So where are you? Uh, 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 to the zebra, 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 you are here. So we now have the gazelle um, and a zebra uh, finished and we can put you as well into the second cruiser. Okay, I'll have to do it through the divisions. Uh, the second cruiser support. Uh, second cruiser support, which is... Uh, would it be this one? No, it's the second cruiser support. Okay, so I'm going to be added here. Zebra. So you are now both in that. And we are going to build another ship. Now, th this is the second time where we had a complaint about not having enough heavy cruisers. Which is kind of interesting because we do have a decent amount. So we're building Victoria Louise. Uh, we might want to build the second Prince Heinrich. We wanted to do that one before. Hmm. Okay, let's build the second Prince Heinrich. We wanted to build that one. We're going to call this one uh, Prin Prince... Uh, how is it spelled? Prince Adalbert. And it's going to be finished in 22 months. Uh, so that should be fine. Okay. So now our budget is down to minus 655 per month, which is good. That's what we wanted. And that means we're building two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and a battleship. That sounds actually fairly evened out. So let's end the turn. The Kaiser has returned from a state visit to Great Britain, bringing home a proposal to solve outstanding sources of tensions between our nations. What's our response? We can never trust Great Britain to keep agreements. We should take the opportunity. I'll take it. We're going to decrease the budget, but also the tensions, and we'll be happy. And the research breakthrough, explosive shells, melanite, gradual increase in shell damage. So, Captain Surza Weinecke of Battleship Brandenburg is promoted to Contra Admiral and Price in command of Home Fleet Cruiser Support. Because... Because of who? I don't know. We probably never had that um, anyone there. Interesting. And Captain Surza Weinecke is placed in command of Brandenburg. Fregat and Captain Dönitz have shown himself to be of average ability. And we got the Melanite shells. Okay, so the tensions with Great Britain are now at 6, which is amazing. Uh, we lowered our budget by about 400 per month, but I'm fine with that. We have enough of a cushion to weather this, even if we have to wait the 8 turns until the toppy comes out of the dockyard. Good for us. So let's end the turn. Captain Surza Kern is in charge of preparations for the annual Army-Navy football game. He wants more time for training, but that will impact overall exercises. Oh, operational exercises, sorry. Uh, do you even need to ask beating the Army's top priority? Or we should not wait? Actually, yeah, we want that prestige bonus. Crew quality is gonna suck, but... The Navy team narrowly wins an even but un... But un Spectacular game. I hope we really, for the sake of it that we get that prestige point. And we have made unexpected advances in light force and torpedo warfare. So we got destroyers. Nice. So we now have access to a completely new ship, a destroyer, and it can be 300 tons. Well, that's a 
Faris small ship. Uh, Russia has reduced naval spending as a result of social discontent. Intelligence from Great Britain. The government of Great Britain has increased naval spending. Okay. Contra Admiral Vogelstand is promoted to Admiral. Captain Surze Frex of Gazelle is promoted to Contra Admiral and placed in command of the First Naval Fleet. Frigate Captain Hellringer is placed in command of Gazelle. Captain Surze Frex is placed in command of Home Fleet First Support. And Osman has shown himself of below average ability. Hmm. Tensions between Japan and Great Britain decreased. We have made an advance in light forces and torpedo fire. Okay, so unfortunately the prestige didn't really increase. We're you know, balancing a little bit on our razor's edge here. So let me see. Uh, destroyers are actually pretty cool. Uh, so let's see if we can design something that would be meaningful here. 27 knots! Jesus Christ, that's actually really amazing. It would have a 3 inch gun forward facing turret. Uh, short range though. Well, we don't really need them to work outside of our territory, do we? Because they're mostly for submarine hunting eventually. Boat coverage is normal. Narrow boat won't do anything. Sloped deck, that's fine. If we wanted normal and medium range, that would be 58 tons of overweight. That's really crazy. I'd have to lower the speed all the way to 22 knots. If I added another turret for aft. Between this one. And lower the D. I'm going to have to go off. I mean, these ones could. Uh, these ones could potentially escort our ships. But it feels a little bit like a waste. Because if we waited a little bit longer to 400 tons, then you could easily make them 24 knots. And we wanted that 27, we would need 500? No. Okay, and then it goes excessively. So 800 ton, and yeah, that is a little bit too big. Mm. What if I made the primary turret twin? Can I even do that? That to a rebuild pounds per gun. It's not. Oh, here, here it goes. So if I remove the forward facing turret and add a three inch gun twin turret, okay, double mount for DDs is not researched yet. Okay, so that actually fixes it. But never mind. For now, I don't think that is good enough for us because. Now, on the other hand, a destroyer escort for the colonial battleships would be pretty darn cool. I haven't thought of that. Uh, what did you suggest? Uh, the destroyers over here. 27 nodes, forward facing, want to short range. Have we been this much overweight before? Speed no more. We don't have any belt armor, even, not even half an inch. 24 knots. Uh, 
Because I'm thinking 25 knots. Five, oh my god. Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Hmm. Trying to figure out. You do have. Just little mounds. So you do have some torpedo capability. But for that, speed would be absolutely paramount. Uh, let's auto design it again. Oh my god! <laughs> you have six secondary guns. Speed, to, uh, but you're so overweight. And we have to remove that. Okay, 26 knots. Center line. Can you actually have double? V center line, swivel mount. Uh, v center line, swivel mount. Ah, no, we can't. Okay, never mind then. Uh, but. Let me. Should be slightly overweight, heavy or crowded centerline gun and torpedo mount with effect rate of fire. Should be scrapped accommodation. I'm actually okay with it. Two. Oh, come on. Jesus Christ. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, we have to wait. Uh, I'm gonna design them and have them built, but uh, I'm having to compromise way too much at this point so let's just end the turn and uh, do it later so intelligence support from great britain uh, they have increased naval spending yet again usa increased their naval budget and tensions between spain and usa increased and between usa and spain decreased okay <laughs> so basically one step forward one step back pretty darn cool uh, okay then, uh, nothing really happening this turn, it's June 1894, Zebra has finished her working up, and there has been an internal upheaval in Southern Korea, Japan is apparently sending a force there ostensibly to restore order, but, is unlike, but it is likely they have more far-reaching plans, what do you recommend? Well, they're our ally, so... Yeah, we should not risk raise tensions over such a trivial matter. There are allies, so they can do whatever the hell they want. Nice, they've taken control over South Korea. A scandal involving some important dignitaries from Spain has occurred at a party given on a world cruise by one of your ships. How do you handle the incident? Use it to embarrass Spain. Hush it up. I don't mind increasing tensions with Spain a little bit, so embarrass them. Temporary setback in figuring out the concept of the early gyroscope. Okay, Zebra has finished and working up. Japan has taken over the control of South Korea. Uh, tension between Russia and Japan increased because of hereditary enmity, which is good because... Um, I mean, it's not good that they have increased tensions, but the fact that Japan has taken over Korea means that our ally is just that much stronger now. Our scientists report that they have suffered a temporary setback and Japan... They have trouble mastering the principle of improved cementing. Okay, well, uh, not much to say there. Mm, cool. Uh, anything for us? Not really. Things are all looking pretty darn good. Still five more months before Topi is finished. So we can just continue. Private shipbuilding is expanding. Max dock size increased by 500 tons. Hell yeah. Intelligence report from Great Britain. Great Britain has reduced the naval spending as a result of social discontent. Private shipbuilding gave us 500 tons. Tensions between Japan and Russia uh, decreased. Spain and USA increased. France and Austria and Hungary decreased. USA and Spain decreased. And... Japan gun manufacturers are now advertising 12-inch guns. Good for them. Okay, tensions across the board dropped. Japan were back to zero. England is now five. Spain is now five. And Russia is five. 
Okay, and but our budget has been slightly increased, so monthly balance is no longer that much of an issue. We're down to 9,452 Reichsmark in the bank. Relations between Spain and USA are very tense. Okay. The government of Great Britain has increased naval spending to keep its navy preeminent. And Topi has been delayed due to the problems of uh, problems with delivery of equipment. And tensions between Russia and Japan increased because Russia controls Sakhalin. Really? Interesting. Spain and USA are very close to war now. So let's see how they handle the crisis. Uh, Spain has 80,000 tons. The United States have 92,400. They have way more battleships and they have two more in the building. They have more heavy cruisers and they're building more. And they have more light cruisers. Um, okay, so the only thing that Spain has more of is Corvettes. Uh, what the hell is going on? You have 80,000 of I think this is wrong, honestly. Mm, Velasco, they have some 10,500 battleships. So this is an interesting ship. If this is true, two 12 inch guns front and aft, two 11 inch guns on the wings, and 10 6 inch guns. That's an, that's an interesting design, but only 60 knots though. That's really not the great. And I wanted to show you guys the Collingwood. Yes, the Collingwood battleship of uh, Great Britain. They have four 13 inch guns on that beast. And six five inch guns and eight two inch guns. So the primaries are really the biggest danger here. The rest is actually kind of fine. And it's also Faroso, but it has a 14 inch bell. That thing is not going down unless you just literally hammer it with everything. And they have a lot of Rodney class battleships, which are also using 13 inch guns. So looks like UK or Great Britain in this case is really we are going all in on the 13 inch guns? And I think they were building, yes, the Revenge class, which is their biggest. Jesus Christ, they're building three more Revenges and two more Magnificents. That's a 14 inch gun as well. Six times six inch guns and 12 two inch guns. But again, their, their battleships are all fairly slow, 16 knots. I know I'm going a little bit overboard on the speed, but... Um, I mean, look at that, their cruisers are all estimated to be 20 knots or 18 knots. So, 20 knots uh, on a battleship means that you can basically keep your distance and point at your enemy and not get overrun. Which is, incidentally, my goal. There has been an... In Internal upheaval in Albania. Italy is sending a force there, ostensibly to restore order, but it is likely they have a far reaching plan. Would you recommend? We should issue an ultimatum demanding they back down. I think we're gonna do that. We can actually take a big tension hit with Italy, and I don't really think, uh, considering the whole Austria Hungary, game that we're playing that we want them uh, to be able to control Albania I'd much rather uh, Austria-Hungary got it. Yeah, let's issue an ultimatum. Italy backs down, but relations are soured. I don't mind. We have prevented them from taking that colony. So Italy backs down. Uh, we have an intelligence support from Austria-Hungary. You ship under construction of the class Kaiser. Okay, we can check that one intelligence report Austria Hungary new ship on the construction of Kaiser Karl the sixth is a belt armor of four inches and turret armor of four yeah okay that's not true no wait it's a okay so this is a battleship Kaiser and this is a heavy cruiser Kaiser Karl sixth okay Austria Hungary and Italy decrease their tensions Russia and Japan decrease and USA and Spain increase cool. 
So we have a little bit of a increase in tensions with Italy, but I'm fine with that. Again, Albania, we don't really have anything or any strategic interest in Albania. I wouldn't mind getting it. Much rather get, for example, Norway or some other African colonies near to us. Uh, but that doesn't mean we will let Italy just, you know, take it away. Because if Austria-Hungary can get it and can get Greece, for example, as well, you know, I would be much happier. Okay, uh, with that said, I think we can. I think we can continue. Our scientists report that they have suffered a temporary setback in figuring out the concept of better house strength calculation. Okay, and same issues with counterfeiting valves. Okay, forgetting Captain Wawa is promoted to Captain Zorze. Forgetting Captain. Ruman is placed in command of Amazon. Tensions between Great Britain and France decrease. Uh, what about that whole you? Oh wow, we had an increase across the board. What about those tensions? Uh, oh, okay. Spain and USA increased to 11, so they are literally one step away from war. That could be interesting. Research Breakthrough, Free Taxes, Naval Academy. Nice, 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 nice. So intelligence support from Great Britain. The government of Great Britain has increased naval spending to keep its navy preeminent. And tensions between Russia and Japan increase. USA and Spain decrease. And we get the Naval Academy. Now the Naval Academy is actually really good. I think it's on the Doctrine. Yes, it's on the Doctrine. So I haven't shown this screen yet. Uh, it is actually pretty darn good. It allows you to specialize in certain uh, ways. So you can, for example, train your people in gunnery and maybe in night fighting as well, uh, or in torpedo warfare, which gives you certain bonuses, but it also increases maintenance significantly. So I usually, once I feel like I'm ready for a war or a war is uh, Im imminent, I go with gunnery. That increases heavily your cost of training. And it's also very important to mention that it doesn't kick in immediately. I think it takes like 12 months uh, to have an effect, but it, it gives you a little bit of a bonus to uh, your chance to hit and I think that is well and worth it. There's also a couple things here like elite pilot training, float point helicopter search priority, stuff like that. You can you know also make um, choices here about what kind of uh, shells your ships are shooting, you know, at which um, targets based on cruisers, white cruisers or battleship categorization. Uh, but in this case, we are interested in the Naval Academy here. It's going to cost us 90 per month, but it's going to give us some more officers and they're going to be of higher quality. So every single time you get this, you should immediately turn it on. There literally is no downside that I know of. And it's just going to make our guys much better. You guys saw that we have, when it comes to ability, we have three above average couple of average and look at how many below average we have so the naval academy is going to take care of that for us i mean you still get you know bad officers but you have much lower chance and we should really keep an eye on our tensions i don't like how i mean you know this is nothing significant that i start with uh, great britain at six so it's nothing major but again i mentioned that a couple of times already it can spiral out of control pretty quickly but anyway, it's December 1894, uh, we should get two ships in January, the Ibex and Topi, so that's going to allow us to get into the new year with an entirely uh, queer budget. We're going to get about 1600 uh, per month extra, so that's going to put us about 800 in the positive. And in additional three months, we're going to get uh, Iran Isabel coming uh, of the Victoria Louise class, which is another 1160. I think that is the point at which we might want to design uh, a ship or the battleship, and that's going to be our flagship of the project or project Berlin, because we do have now, uh, or will have the uh, necessary docker capacity. We're actually gonna go 
uh, about a thousand overworld so we'll be able to design maybe even a slightly better ship so let's end the turn here new dock has been completed topi is commissioned ibex is commissioned Fregatan Capitan uh, Becker is placed in command of Toby. Fregatan Capitan Korn is placed in command of the Ibex. And Great Britain has reduced naval spending as a result of social discontent. Okay, so that's the first <laughs> time that happened. And Fregatan Capitan Hermann and Japan and Russia increased tensions. Okay, so we're ending the uh, year with a budget of 106,360 with a positive 1,342 monthly balance. So we might even, you know, go ahead and design that battleship at the start of the next episode because we're going to have enough money for that. The relations uh, between Spain and the USA are still extremely strained. It would be kind of cool to see a war happen there. Unfortunately, there might be a war happening soon between Japan and Russia, and that would most likely drag us into it with them. Fortunately, Russia doesn't have any allies, but I think their navies, yeah. They have about 210,000 tons of ships. We have... Okay, we have 140,000 and Japan has 88,000, so it is likely that, you know, if we are lucky, we should be able to get rid of them, depending on how their fleets are split. But still, I don't think we're ready. I think we still need a couple of years to consolidate everything. So let me just add the Ibex and Gazelle into the division where we wanted, which was the first scout, right? Yep. So let's add the ships there. Gazelle class Ibex and Gazelle class Toby. And we're going to call it an episode. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, still no war in the world, but uh, things are, you know, looking pretty good. And we'll see about that battleship in the next episode. So till then, you guys, take care.